in Israel, we work from Sunday till Thursday. So for us, it's like a startup week now, but uh, the weekend was good. Entrepreneurship and building stuff and breaking stuff for the past 10 years. Novu is my third company together with my co-founder, Tomer. Novu started in our second company. We've been building a recreational sports marketplace. And yet another time we had to build, you know, a, a notification in front of the product. And then I remember like Tomer and I sat in, in the office late night and then like, what if, you know, this could be a standalone, you know, service and a product and people can consume it as a service. We've done a lot of user interviews uh, back in the time, I think more than hundreds, like with local Israeli companies, big, small enterprise, you know, trying to understand what people are doing. Like, are they, they already, there is a product on the shelf, they're building it in-house, what's going on with there? Uh, and the first POC we actually built for Novo was not open source. It was uh, dedicated for product people as a persona. It was uh, quite a different uh, product. We're selling Novo twice. Once uh, from the product, and then the product kind of hands us over to the engineer. And the conversation was not easy because the engineers, they were like, yeah, we can build this alone. Like we don't need, you know, like a closed product and like. We didn't frame Novo correctly to them. It was like, you know, they, they're very defensive. Like, yeah, we, we, we will build this. You cannot, like, we cannot integrate this and et cetera. And this is basically when we had to pivot. Like we understand like after a few of those, we're doing something wrong. You know, we are both in the open source community for quite a, a while. We have a few open source libraries that we kind of created back then and like really enjoyed the whole motion of it. And then they said like, Hey, why won't we try, you know, something, um, and to see if like engineers get it, you know, the first version of Novo on open source was a Node.js library with 25 lines of code. Basically it's a, it was a very, a very simple stateless library that all we've done is like we said, okay, there are three tiers to notifications. There is the delivery provider. There is the message content of the notifications, and there is the actually trigger that triggers the notification. And all of them are decoupled from each other and you can switch you know the different phases of it didn't do anything specific we just send it to a few whatsapp groups of friends and etc but there was no really traction out of it and after a while we spoke with tomer and like okay we see this is like getting some traction but it's nothing substantial maybe we will share you know our uh vision about what we want Novo to be not what it is today you know like the whole api based kind of dealing with time zones user preferences like embeddable notification like really whatever we thought Novo could be one day and we got a dev2 uh we wrote like this blog post on dev2 about like yeah, building the first open source notification infrastructure okay like let's put it out there like whatever happens happens and you know kind of we just wanted to see if developers get what we're doing like are the right target persona i remember it was on a friend's wedding and then suddenly like I'm, I'm i'm checking out on github and people like joining discord and you know writing github issues and so i said thomas something is going on like there's quite an unusual amount of traffic to novel and then i went to google analytics and then like i'm seeing like you know hundreds of concurrent you know uh visits and also on github like it's exploding people entering discord like what's going on there uh, and we asked a few folks and they're like, hey, Google picked you up and like trending posts, you know, on their Google feed, uh, cool. like on the mobile apps. And we had so much traffic during that weekend. Um, and from there, it all kind of exploded. So after the initial traction, what happened is that we got uh, inbound uh, basically from a few VC funds uh, in the US and European ecosystems. And apparently we didn't realize that, but they are monitoring a lot, the open source kind of ecosystem and, you know, they're rising and like based on some vanity metrics, like stars and et cetera, organized one month of, of fundraising process where we basically aligned everyone into the same timeline of, okay, we have the first two weeks and then like we try to control, you know, the, the whole dynamics of the round to make sure that we get on top of it. Uh, on one hand, we get the best, uh, 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 results we have and we, we've like we've done like crazy you know from seven in the morning until like 2 a.m at night like in the office <laughs> speaking with us funds you know like all the times on differences um and in the end like we i think we spoke with over 100 vcs in in that month uh so the pipeline was quite high and the importance was having this pipeline you know managed by us and not managed by them so we know like okay you got until next week 
to move to the next step. Otherwise, sorry, like we don't want to waste time on this. So like this is the technicalities of, of you know, around, but yeah. And, and basically after that, we closed our uh, seed funding in uh, January, basically of uh, last year. And since then, you know, building the company, hiring the first crazy people to join us, and we can ch chat about it in a second, like, because it's a strange thing, you know, you reach out to somebody from the internet, uh, <laughs> from the open source community and like, hey, leave your job and come to work with us, like somebody that never met us. If he searches about Notifier back then, there is nothing on the internet, you know, it's like, I, the first people came to know who I am. <laughs> like, I really appreciate them because they made like a crazy move. I, I'm not sure if I would done it, you know, <laughs> if I was in their shoes, but th these are the first crazy employees uh, that joined us. Were those, were those uh, did they already contribute or did you know them or spotted them online? And what did they look like? Yeah. So a combination, uh, we had a few of the open source contributors we had, uh, David uh, was the first one kind of that was really excited about the project uh, prior to anything like from the small lib we had uh, and really got in touch. And one day he calls me like on Discord and says, hey, Dima, I have this crazy idea. Let's take this, you know, uh, um, you know, the 20 line library we have and let's create, you know, a service for it, an API and like, okay, David, come. <laughs> you, you got it, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> it was important for us, you know, up front with the community to say, hey, we are also uh, a business, you know, we need to sustain ourselves somehow to, to keep kind of supporting the open source motion we have. We released it quite early on and with the cloud service, you know, it's quite straightforward. Like we don't reinvent the wheel. There is like a usage-based kind of classical uh, pricing. And on the other hand, we have the enterprise motion of, you know, the on-prem managed services that we provide for them. And, and this is more of the enterprise kind of sales motion. Is there something additional that could be said about your choice to introduce the cloud version early on? I, I personally like that. I'm just curious for other people in this position and thinking about that. Um, does it help with anything additional, for instance, you know, analytics and seeing how people use your product? Is there some other considerations? Uh, yeah, exactly. 100%. Like this is one of the things like understanding usage, like we did see in, you know, a lot of interest from the open source community to share feedback, nonetheless, even like when we don't have, you know, the classical analytics available, but still being able to see and monitor and experiment. And it's a huge difference in my opinion. And there is a lot of folks doing also analytics on the, you know, self-hosted kind of editions and also on the, like, you can opt in for like sharing wow. some aggregated analytics to help, you know, improving the product. But with the cloud, it's like, it's very dynamic for us. We can deploy version, see like the experiment, how it goes. Um, and also begin, you know, because we do believe there is a thing like to have Novo, you know, being able to scale for like a huge amount of events and notification. There's a lot of moving parts and our vision was, you know, register, get an API key and like we, we take it care for you. You cannot force uh, to build a community. You, you cannot force it too much, you know? It's like, if you imagine it like a garden, you know, with vegetables and, and, and flowers or whatever, you cannot force it to grow, you know, 10x faster just because you do like, you know, something. You can provide it, you know, the best environment possible. You can provide it the best nutrients possible, but you need to give it time. And you it kind of taking on by itself and creating this diversity of, of different people, different cultures, different ideas, and like providing a good environment for it. And you just need to let it time. You know, it's like you cannot force some things in life. It's a time investment. This is a decision you need to make. Like, okay, do I want to invest in this or not? I think the main kind of thesis of you need to kind of give it the right environment and nurture, you know, the people and the, like the people that coming in and give them place and give them, you know, ability to express themselves and, and feel part of it, basically. The first type of contributors, and this is the also the early adapters we had in the community. This is the folks that, you know, have built this previously in their companies and they like, they really connected to the pain and like, they see, you know, how it can help them and et cetera. And they're very, really excited from the very beginning to participate and help. Uh, this is the one kind of type of people. Uh, the other ones is just people who want to learn, you know, they are maybe new to the tech industry and Novo is, you know, we have a 
kind of it's a for a full stack developer you know we have the front end and with react we have the back end with node and like using mongodb and like you have a real kind of life you know application that you can learn from how it works how it operates and and how do you work in a team environment with all, like pull requests so we had also a few folks that just you know might not be experienced with what novo trying to do but they want to learn and, and and it's a great place and for example my my little brother Nikita he wants to get into tech as well and he's done a few studies and courses you know in in in, in front end and back end and he was like hey I and he just went and started to contribute you know also to Novo because for him it's like you learn some stuff in theory but like how it looks like in a real world application you know with like big project and etc folks that you know working using Novo uh, in their companies and they hey we need this very strange SMS provider that only operates in, uh, you know, Singapore or whatever. And then they can, instead of just sending a support ticket and then hoping for the best, uh, they can actually, hey, maybe we're the only people in the world using this provider, but we can actually, you know, integrate it into the product because it's open source and we can see under the hood and contribute. Um, this is kind of the three main characters. Uh, if time allows, maybe hear a little bit about your music background or some other lessons learned. Uh, throughout your journey one of the important lessons you know i've found is that people you know in everything in, in in a band in a company in a startup in a whatever is the most important thing you know and it's like what each person contributes and with the band we had you know amazing writer lyrics writer marketing uh you know operational parts and when you have kind of this collaboration and everybody brings his own kind of thing to the table and specifically with founders, this is what I kind of always recommend is that having somebody that kind of completes you, you know, with a different skills, uh, skill set, but on the other hand, also sharing a lot of interest with you. So it's like, it's not only, you know, opposites, but you also have some fun together and you can kind of complete each other There is also a great opportunity to build things in the open. You know, we, we share our a uh, uh, handbook as a company also publicly available on Notion and maybe we can also attach this later. Being transparent, I think for us is really one of our core values as a company. Uh, with our Notion handbook and everything combined, I kind of like, I want to encourage people, you know, be open about the stuff you're doing and people always, you know, like ask me, yeah, but what the competition can see what you're doing. I'm like, I don't care, you know, as long as they're busy, you know, going after us, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we are able to kind of be in front and kind of learn and, and, and make it quicker. We don't really care about those things. And, you know, it's for us, we're just able to learn so much faster by doing so. And I can only recommend, you know, folks specifically in the open source world, it's kind of, you know, hard to do it without, you know, being transparent in a sense. One of the biggest growth engines for us was being transparent. So I can only recommend that. Engineers, you know, in the world, there is a big, you know, audience of engineers. I don't think is it Martin Fuller, I think once said that like the amount of engineers in the world, I think it doubles, you know, each, I think three or four years or something like this. Um, and engineers today, they are, they have a lot of, you know, buying power, basically, they have a lot of influence. I think it's much easier for an engineer to see, you know, what's going on under the hood of the product on the other hand to see the community to being able to see okay like we can get support like they can evaluate it uh and and they are mostly more you know they are willing to help like we we we, we see it right now with now a lot of companies right now you know trying to be focused on what they're doing you know we don't want to reinvent the wheel as a company if we can get you know mixed panel or segment or plausible for analytics i don't want to build this in-house I don't want to maintain an email server when I have SunGrid or Twilio. And prior to that, some cases, companies were doing that, you know, it's like, it was a common thing. Like you build your own email server, you build your own analytics uh, uh, in front, et cetera. And today I think kind of the competitiveness against other products forces you to focus on the core of the things you're doing. All the other things are, you know, you can either buy them or you can use them as an off the shelf solution. So you don't have to you know, invest the very precious engineering time into doing so. And I think this opens a lot of opportunities. It comes with a struggle, you know, it's a lot of times, it's not only fun and, and, and easy, and it comes to monetization, I think is one of the hardest things, you know, you can be the most amazing open source product and you have no commercial success, you know, out of it. So you need to plan for it and you need to be smart about it. There is more 
uh, things to look at and a lot of companies that had success that done this, this similar path and you can kind of understand, okay, it can be done.